Okay, so I think I'm live. It's not counting in. So hopefully I'm live. Um, yeah, so here we go. Training 20, our functional Friday is a um, focus on the hip hinge. So hip hinging is used in daily life, but also with deadlifts and a lot of exercises like rows and stuff like that. So an actual hip hinge, I'm just going to show you first, is literally exactly what it says. From the hips, so I've got my hip bones here. I'm hinging from this joint, my hip joint, forwards like so. This is a hip hinge, which is used for picking stuff up. We like deadlift with it with a more strict movement, rows, everything like that. So learning to hip hinge is really important for not only back health, but learning to perform exercises correctly with the right muscle groups and stuff. So um there's a lot of differences between the squat and the deadlift in terms of the hip hinge which is what people get wrong so i'm going to show you that quickly too um what we're focusing on with the hip hinge is like where the way our bum goes basically but that's the best way to think of it so think of your bum going backwards so bum goes back for a hip hinge like so so bum's going back whereas for a squat we're going, bum goes down, so bum comes downwards. That's the main difference between the two in simple terms to make it easy for you to think, am I doing it right? Because they get confused very often for beginners who haven't really worked on either before. So always think today, bum should be going backwards, shoulders coming forwards, and we're hinging, hinging from the hips. Now, one of the biggest issues uh, people have with it is their mobility around the area to be able to do it. So we're talking about our hips uh, and our hamstrings mainly, um, our lower back too, but then that tends to be from the hips and the hamstrings anyway. So we're gonna focus on those first. So we're just gonna start stretching um, today. So if you bring yourself down, we are gonna loosen off the lower back first, just with our cat cow, first of all, just to get some mobility in the spine. Now today's a very like very basic session. You'll get a lot out of it whether you can deadlift fine or not. So don't worry about that. But it's going through very much the basics. I will be doing another session in the future focusing on um, more deadlifts and stuff. Still about hip hinging. But this will it'll basically be a part two to this one. But today's just going to be definitely learning the hip hinge and the differences between that and other movements. So from here, we're gonna open up the hips. So you're gonna bring one leg up to the side like so and hit this strider stretch. You can keep this knee down and stretching out here. And we take this inside arm. We're gonna reach it down to the floor, that elbow down to the floor. And then we're gonna open up like so. Like I said, the hips and the hamstrings are the main issues here. So we're trying to open up the hips a bit here. And we're going to take it into the hamstrings by rocking back, feeling that stretch. And then we'll rock back forwards and back, stretching out that hamstring like so. Hamstrings are a big limiter. So that's a deadlift, especially a Romanian deadlift where we're keeping the legs a bit straighter. It's also tends to be inactive glutes and tight hamstrings tends to be precursors for injuring your back or having a very tight lower back. Let's swap over to the other side. We'll hit that strider stretch first. So here we are, elbow towards the floor and then reaching up. So these are great warm-up exercises to do anyway before workouts, squats and deadlifts primarily. We're going to go for these hamstring warm-ups as well now. So performing more dynamic movements, stretching out those muscles and just kind of getting some warmth into these muscles.
And then we're going to finish off with a frog stretch, which is where we're going knees nice and wide. Keeping the back arched and just sinking that bum back. Sink back and then back forward like so. Knees as wide as they can, that's the key. Feel that stretch in your groin, your hips. Like so. So I've already shown you a hip hinge, but I'm going to go through it again, quick, again quickly before I take you into one on the floor. So what you may find is when we're hinging, we're using our posterior chain, which is our hamstrings and glutes, lower back and into the spine. Okay, so what you may find is that if you're finding you're rounding over slightly, especially at the lower back, because you've got tight hamstrings or you feel like you're tight in your hips, it's quite normal. That's why we've done those warm up already. But we're going to take the hamstrings out of it first of all, so that we're able to keep flat back. What I want you to focus on though before is keeping those hips tucked under, like we did with the dead bug stuff. We want to tuck the hips first, squeezing on the glutes, and then um, we're going to be hinging from there, okay? But we're going to start on our knees. So our hamstrings connect up here to our hips and connect to our knees. So they're connecting on both sides, which means by bending the leg here, we're relaxing the bottom of the hamstring, so that's going to cause them to be not as stretched, so not bother our hip hinge as much, especially if you have tight hamstrings, okay? So we're trying to relax the muscle down here. So now then we cause a hip hinge using the top muscle, the, the hamstring muscle as a whole won't be as tight, so you should be allowed to do it a bit more than normal if hamstrings are your issue. So how we do this is we come up here, Let's get your hands on your hips. We're gonna tuck the hips forward and then we're gonna hinge forward like so. Now your body weight goes backwards and it's a great way to learn the deadlift because you have to. You have to push that bum backwards otherwise you're gonna fall forwards, okay? So this is where we do it. Hands on hips, tuck those hips forward, push back. Your bum goes down slightly and that's fine. The bum's primarily going backwards, keeping this flat back and then we pull back up here. So bum goes back, hinge. If you're gonna pull forward, you need to keep your weight a bit further back. So you can use your toes if you need to. Hinge and back up, keeping those hips tucked up. Hinge. And this is just, this is it. This is all we're doing when it comes to the movement of the hip hinge itself. It's just like pushing that bum backwards and coming back up here. So this should be easier for anyone that has tight hamstrings to do here. Go hinging and back. You can use your hands if you feel like you're gonna fall forward. The main thing is, as you can see, that back and spine stay neutral. Bum's going backwards and I'm hinging back and forth, okay? Forward and back. So we're gonna bring it into a standing position and we're going to use a wall. So hopefully you'll be able to see a wall um, whilst being able to see the screen, but don't worry if not, just have a quick look and then have a quick go. I'll do it for a little longer so you get time to go over. But what we're going to start with is heels against the wall like so, standing up straight, and then take half a step away, not too far, like so. Hands go on hips, you tuck those hips forward, and then all we're doing here is pushing the bum back slightly. And if you see here, my bum hits really early. I'm barely doing any movement. As soon as my bum hits the wall, I'm coming back up. I am hinting from the hips, just a very limited movement. But this is why, this is what we want to do. We want to build up that movement. So push your bum back to the wall, bring back forwards, like so. Remember, keep those hips tucked up, that back is staying in a neutral position, nice flat back, like so. So then once you've done that, I just want you to inch forward just a little bit, because a little bit does a lot with these now. So same position, tuck forward, push your bum back. So now you can see my range of motion has increased quite a bit. 
I'm almost getting down quite low here. Whenever, now we're standing up, I want to focus on having soft knees. So two things we do wrong is we lock the knees out and try and hinge from here, which puts a lot of stress on the hamstrings and it may cause us to round like so. Don't want that. Well, or, or, but when I tell people to bend their knees, they will automatically go into a squat. And as you can see here, I'm kind of sitting down into that squat rather than hinging back and forth. So the key is to have soft knees. So nice soft knees, and then you just, so you're moving from the hips. So the, the idea behind that is when you need to, you can start to bend from the knees a bit, give a bit of give, but we don't, we want to be primarily moving from the hips. Now you've done that, you can take another inch forward, and then here, tuck those hips, push back. So I'm having to, like, I'm pretty much down to my full depth here, and I'm only just reaching the wall when I push my bum back, like so, okay? So this is what we're looking for here. Bum goes down, touch, and back up. And this is a really basic, really useful way to learn that hip hinge there. Pushing the bum backwards, touching the wall with the bum, and then bring it back forwards. Placing one hand on the stomach, one hand on the back can help. Focus on keeping that back flat as we do this. Like so. You may feel it in the hamstrings, that's totally normal. Like so, the main thing is we're learning to move from this position here. And this, again, may be very basic for some of you, but really important. And even if you deadlift all the time, or you know how to hip hinge, just repeating this all, a lot, you can get a lot out of it, especially for back health in your lower back. So that's the hip hinge there using the wall. And now all we're gonna do is come away from the wall and do the exact same thing. So feet shoulder apart, tuck those hips up, pushing that bum back, only going to here, this is my limit before I can feel my hamstrings. If I could try and go any further here, I'm going to round, which isn't too bad if I'm picking something up, it's not the end of the world. You can round the back a little bit. Don't be one of those people that thinks you have to pick everything up like a robot. But we're talking about deadlift, we don't want to um, be lifting a big old heavy weight and rounding at the bottom of the back. So find your limit and then back up like so. So hopefully you've nailed this. We're going to, like I say, I'm going to do another session about this. Um, focusing more on the deadlift, but also focusing on stick work, which is a really good way if you're still struggling with this. And that will be coming in the next week or so. But if you've nailed that and that feels good, then we're going to start to look at the knees now and see the difference between a squat and a deadlift um, primarily and how to use your knees in a deadlift and a hip hinge. So obviously I'll just show you there. So tuck, tuck, I'm at my limit here. So bring yourself to your limit and just hang here. So you may feel strained down here, especially if you've got tight hamstrings. Now, I'll, if I want to go any lower, whilst maintaining this flat back, I'd have to bend, bend at the knees, okay? So you can see that now. So I want you to go some pulses like so, where you're over in this hinge position, the back is staying flat, and I'm just bobbing with the knees, and then I can easily touch the floor, keeping the core strong and maintaining that flat back. So that is the other part of a deadlift. So give that a go. I'm going to show you another deadlift here. So if I was down here, if I was, sorry, up in a deadlift, if I'm going down and I can bend my knees at the bottom to get low. So if you're, my bar's down here, I need to be able to get to that position, but I don't want to be sitting into a squat and doing this. This is not how you deadlift. A deadlift is with that hip hinge. So allowing those knees to bend and bob like so allows you to get that extra depth. So with that said, we're gonna do a real good warm-up exercise. Great, I do it all the time for in my warm-up for exercise for squats and deadlifts. But it's also a really good exercise to kind of differentiate between the squat and the deadlift and sorting out your hip hinge, okay? Quite tricky though, so bear with me and give it a go. So we're gonna start in that hip hinge position, like so. So tuck the hips, hinge down, arms be your arms out straight, like so. Now what you're gonna do, 
is you're going to go from this deadlift position, this hip hinge position, shift it into a squat position. The way we do that is we lift our arms up and forward and we sit our bum down. And now I'm sitting, you may be up here if you struggle with depth, but now I'm sitting into a squat. And now I'm going to bring my hands back to facing the floor and back into that hip hinge. Hinge and up. Okay. So you can see the huge difference between a squat and a deadlift by doing that, as well as it opens up your hips, your hamstrings, and gets you into that hip hinge and squat movement. So here we go again. So dead hip hinge down, arms straight, lift the arms up and sit the bum down into that squat, keep your chest up right, look forward, hinge back up, the bum comes back up, and then standing up, okay? We're gonna do five of those. So down we go, into that squat, back up we come, up, down, squat, hinge, up, hinge, squat, hinge, up, we've got two more, hinge, squat, hinge, up, hinge, squat, hinge, up. A really good warm-up exercise to do you can even take the standing part out of it like so so we're into this hinge we squat and then we hinge we are doing a warm-up there very similar to that frog squat we did yesterday actually um, it really opens up the hips and learns the difference between the two exercises now another exercise we're going to do is a good way to open up the torso in that hinge position it helps with rows and um, torso rotation so, and it also, if you're unsure if you're in the right position, it can help with that too. And I'll show you why. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be down this position here and reaching up to the ceiling. Now, what you can see here is I've got one hand pointing to the ceiling and one hand pointing to the floor. Both are dead straight. If you're doing that, then you're probably in the right hip hinge position, unless you're rounding the back. But if we're talking about being in a squat, if you try that in a squat, if you try that, you'd either be pointing nowhere near the ceiling or you'd be here like so. It just doesn't work in terms of the mobility you've got. Because we're, rather, if we're going to do this exercise, we'll be doing it here for a squat. For this hinge, we need to twist open and rotate. Where it's here, we've lost that kind of mobility, okay? So the way we're going to do this is deadlift yourself down until your elbows or just above your elbows reach your knees. I want you to push out against there and hold that position. So sideways on, you should be in this position here. Front ways on is like so. And then from here, you're going to keep this connection to your leg. Reach up, twist, and back down. Same on the other side. Up, twist and back down. So join me with this. I'll show you side on for the five we're gonna do on each side. So here we go. Up we go. One. One. Maintaining this core strong, flat back. Up it goes. Two. Two. Really good warm up exercise. Or just practice being more comfortable in this hip hinge position. Which if we're rowing a lot or wanting to deadlift often, you have to be comfortable in these kind of positions. Same with the squat. If you're not comfortable in that deep squat, then why would you expect to be able to squat heavy weights in that position? So there we go. So now you should be comfortable getting into that hip hinge. Like I said, today was a very basic exercise and we're gonna to look to do more of this because deadlifts is one of the hardest things to learn if you don't know it already. Um, and even if you do, learning these things can help you when you're lifting heavy weights and stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that and hope you got something out of it. Have a nice weekend and then I'll post next week's schedule on Sunday. <laughs>